going to discuss the heart of the matter today. But first, I want to take one step back and remind us where we've been on this journey. It is clear that you're in there. You're aware of things in there. All we've done is slowly, gradually, very deeply peel back the layers of what you're aware of. So obviously, you're aware of the world that unfolds in front of you. I hope, and I know it's challenging, but I hope you've spent some time to watch from a detached and reasonable point of view to realize that it's true that the world unfolding in front of you has nothing to do with you. If you were not there, it would still be unfolding, <laughs> right? That's how you, in a scientific experiment, the way you measure what the causal effects are, what the causes are, is you remove them and you see what difference it makes to the environment that you're studying. Well, the truth of the matter is, if we removed you from the moment you are in, the vast majority of the time, and looked all over around you, and not to mention the rest of the universe, there's not a whole lot of a difference. I'm sorry, I know that's tough on the ego, but the truth of the matter is, it's going to keep on going, it's going to keep unfolding, and even the part that you have any influence on is so tiny compared to what's going on everywhere, to the right of you, to the left of you, at all times, that it really is a case of egocentric way of looking at things to think that the world is about you, because it's not. It goes on by itself. So we've now established, and we'll talk more about how to work with that, but I just want you to dare to take what we call the seat of witness consciousness and notice that the world is unfolding in front of you without you, in essence, doing a thing, and it will continue going on as it has for 13.8 billion years. Then we came closer in the last session, last two sessions, and talked about your mind because the world coming in is not the only thing you experience. You also, while you're in there experiencing, which is what you're doing, you experience the thoughts that are created in your mind. And we went pretty deep with that, and I hope you did well with that, of seeing that yes, there are thoughts, and no, I'm not creating them. <laughs> they are sort of creating themselves, and that the types of thoughts I'm having are probably quite different, or absolutely quite different than the thoughts other people are having, because the cause of my thoughts is different, that I have stored this stuff inside of me, and now that is causing thoughts to bubble up. And they're very specific to me. We will go into much more detail in future sessions about what to do about this. I don't want you worrying about what to do about it right now, because the truth of the matter is, is recognition is not half the solution, it's 90% of the solution. If you are willing to notice that you are not creating your thoughts, that whether you like it or not, they are creating themselves, and then go a step further and realize it's not always so much fun what they decide to create. <laughs> it's not always so easy to live in there. In fact, that's what makes it hard to live in there, is that the thoughts that are being created are not always so comfortable. It is not just the world coming in, and it is not just the thoughts that are being stimulated inside, either self-generated or stimulated by the world coming in. That's not your only experience in there you have another experience that is very, very powerful. And that is, you have emotions. What is the difference between thoughts and emotions? Most people don't separate those. A lot of people don't separate those. I have given lectures where I just call the combination of your thoughts and emotions your psyche, the personal self, the inner world that's going on inside of you, generated by you. That's fine. For the purposes of how deep we're going in this course, I want you to clearly see the difference between your thoughts and your emotions. So for example, if I asked you, all right, where are your thoughts? Now I know you can't point to them. I know they're not visible on this plane, but I've never met anybody that pointed to their hand when I asked them, where are your thoughts? I never met anybody that pointed to their foot, right? And I'll tell you a secret. I've never met anybody who pointed to their heart. They point to their head. Oh, my thoughts are driving me crazy. Look at Rodin with the thinker. He's not holding his heart. He's holding his head, <laughs> all right? That's where your thoughts are. And when you sit there and say, oh, my thoughts are driving me crazy, just naturally, you instinctually put your hands up in this area because thoughts are generated in the mind. And this is, you don't know, you don't realize how deep you are. You experience mind in this area when you look. It's not that it has to be there, but you look inside and you see your thoughts. You actually see them somewhere. They are actually there. 
And that's where you look to see your thoughts. And now if I ask you, where do you feel your emotions? You feel jealousy, you feel love. All of a sudden insecurity comes over you, you feel embarrassment, right? I realize it spreads, there's no question, it spreads throughout what we call your aura, right? Where do you feel emotions, right? Well, when you tell somebody you love them, you don't say, oh my God, I love you so much, and hold your head. That's Ay Maron, I'm not doing so good with you, right? You, you sit there and say, oh, I, I love you so much. What happens when they leave you? Oh my God, it's killing me since she left, right? It is in your heart. It is not in your physical heart. Doctors won't find it when they get, and by the way, if you happen to have a heart transplant, you won't get the other person's emotions. Don't worry. It is not the physical heart that you're dealing with, no more than it is actually your brain that is creating your thoughts. We'll get into that more later, all right? But basically, your heart is creating emotions 